Through faith, you can remove all limits in your life. So how do you go beyond where those limits used to be? Find out as Arkansas Live starts right now. In our study, No More Limits, we're going to go past the limits today. Did you know that God can do for you exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think? So there's no limits. One day I was walking and praying and the Lord spoke to me <laughs> and I was just thanking him for everything that he'd done for me. Oh, it was so wonderful. He said, you know, I can do more. I said, whoa. He said, I, I'm not the limit. You're the limit. I can do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think. He said, in other words, you can never ask or think more than what I can do. So there are no limits. Two sources of limitations. One, ourselves. Two, others. Now, I'm teaching uh, from my series entitled No More Limits. Here's the original book that was published in 1999 by Harrison House. This book is no longer in print, but uh, Whitaker House took that book and revised it, put a new title on it, Unleashing Heaven's Blessings. So if you'd like to get the book, you can just go online, our website, and pull up a bookstore or shopping, order this book, Unleashing Heaven's Blessings. And you can also get the teaching uh, on this USB thumb drive, No More Limits, and it's a complete volumes one and two. This is this is a tremendous amount of information. So you can also go online and find this material. Okay, let's go to Ephesians chapter 3, and let's look at verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Now, if you read this in its context, the power that he's referring to working in us is the power of love. I know it, it doesn't say that in this verse, but if you read all of the scripture here that he's talking about, you go back to, let's say, verse 17, that Christ might dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love, you may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, length, and depth, and height of love, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, which is the power of love, <clears throat> it's understood if you read all the scriptures uh, dealing uh, with this. Okay, how do you pass the limit? How do you go beyond your limits? And I've already talked to you about identifying the limits, uh, understanding that there are no limits in God, remove the limits from your life. You, you overcome by the blood of the Lamb the word of your testimony. Your faith is what you use to remove the limits. You're an overcomer. You have the measure of faith. But if you get bogged down, if you let religion, if you let the world, if you let experience, other people talk you out of it, you'll do nothing. You'll go nowhere. And too many of the church company are just sitting down. Here, here's what we've done. We've substituted things for faith. We've substituted things for power. We've substituted things for the anointing. And, and my goodness, five, six, seven years ago, the Lord spoke to me about this. And he said, uh, the church has substituted community service for the power of God. It doesn't mean community service is not good and valid. It doesn't mean that we should not help people. But community service requires no anointing or power from God. There are a lot of benevolent organizations, a lot of community civic organizations in our cities and our communities that do things to help people all the time, food pantries, clothes, uh, feeding stations. But it doesn't take the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit to do that. It just takes a desire, a heart, a willingness, 
uh, organization. I mean, governmental organization. The United States government does this <laughs> as a nation. <laughs> it's called entitlements. It doesn't take the power of God or the anointing of God to do it. And God said there's nothing wrong with the community service. But he said the substitution of the community service for the power of God. The church used to have the power of God. Used to lay hands on the sick, cast out devils. The church used, uh, uh, the church didn't, didn't have a counseling service. The church used to cast out demons. You, you see the church operating in the gifts of the Spirit and people will get their needs met. But it won't be through entitlements. Another thing the Lord told me was watch out for the word tolerance. Now this was a decade ago. Tolerance. At the time, I didn't know what he was talking about. Tolerance? Is there anything wrong with being tolerant? No. Nothing wrong with being tolerant any more than community service. But he said, watch out for this word tolerance because it's going to be perverted and used against you. Just think of it today. If you speak the truth about a situation, you're being intolerant. You're labeled as a hater. You're labeled as being intolerant. And there have been those that have gone so far as to say, well, Jesus was tolerant, so we should be tolerant. Oh, Jesus wasn't tolerant of sin. He told the woman with the issue of blood, I, I mean, with the cult and the act of adultery, he said, I don't condemn you, but go and sin no more. Jesus didn't tolerate sin. Threw the money changers out of the temple because they were cheating the people. So the, the church has to get back to its roots, its foundation, which was preaching the gospel, casting out devils, laying hands on the sick. <laughs> if you eat any dead thing, it won't hurt you. Preaching the gospel to the world. And these signs shall follow those that believe. We've put the limits on us. We've let the world, we've let government, we've let religion, doctrine, experience, all these things limit us. I remember when we, we first started the ministry. Jeannie and I first started the ministry and we had resigned our jobs. We had spent all the money that we had saved and invested over the years for about a year studying the Word of God. And now we were full-time in the ministry and we didn't have enough money to pay attention. And I needed, I don't remember what I needed it for, but we totaled up all the uh, financial needs of, of the ministry at that time in 1973, and we needed $5,000. We didn't have $5,000, didn't know where to get $5,000. So I went down to the bank. And at that time, it was First National Bank. And it and then became... Um, yeah, let's see, they changed the name two or three times. It, it became now, it would be now Regions Bank. But it, back then it was downtown, it was first, first National, then it became First Commercial, then it became Re Regions. And I went down there and I said, <laughs> I'd like to borrow $5,000. <laughs> and they said, what collateral uh, do you have? Are you employed? And all, all of those things. I said, oh, I'm, I, I'm working for Jesus now. I was so ignorant and so innocent. And, and I said, yeah, we, we, we quit our jobs and, and we uh, now travel and sing and preach and uh, we live by faith. <laughs> and I was so excited about that. And I could see that, that vice president of loans, I could see his face just go blink, what? I mean, to him, that was the worst thing I could have said. In other words, I was not gainfully employed. I just lived by uh, love offerings and traveled and sang. Why would he want to loan me any money? Well, he wouldn't, and he didn't. He said, I'm sorry, we, you know, we can't loan you any money. You don't have any collateral. You don't have a job, blah, blah, blah. So I walked out of there and I said, oh, Lord, what am I going to do? How are we going to pursue this? And then all of a sudden I realized, hey, God's my source. I'll do what the Bible says. Give and it shall be given unto you. So I scrimped and scraped around, and I, I came up, I sold some little old junky stocks and cashed in this and that, whatever, and I came up with $500. $500. I mean, that was all we had. 
$500. And the Lord told me to send it to a ministry as seed. So I did. I was so excited. I, I, was, I, didn't, I didn't have enough sense to be afraid because I'd been studying the Bible for a year, and I mean, I was high on faith. And so I wrote out a check for $500, and I sent it to this ministry and planted it as seed and believed God for the return. Oh, man, I, I went out to the mailbox every day after I mailed that letter to see, it, it, and nothing happened. No mail came. No money came. No harvest came. What am I going to do? I cannot tell you how we lived. I do not remember how we lived, but we lived from day to day. We never lacked. We never wanted for anything, never missed a meal. I mean, we, we didn't have any, any, quote, disposable income to, to splurge and do anything that, you know, we used to do. But we were so on fire for God. I mean, we just wanted to serve God, and it didn't matter. So we were just believing God. We thank God for our harvest. And I'll tell you what, in the next few months, that $5,000 came a little bit here, a little bit there, this way and that way and whatever. That, that, there's, there's never, there was no $5,000 check showed up in the mailbox. It was something here and something there and something here and something there. And what was God doing? He was trying to show me that he was perfectly able to supply all of our need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. But his system, his way of thinking and his way of doing things was not the same as ours. Now I'm going to deal with that today. God said, my ways are higher than your ways. They're not like your ways. They're higher. And I can do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think. You can't ask or think any more than what I am able to provide. So take the limits off. Now, let me explain this to you. This is, this is just wisdom of experience. And you don't teach your experience for doctrine, but it helps for people to know. You can't, you can't, your faith won't work above your knowledge of the Word of God. Now, I had head knowledge, and I was learning uh, faith and I was applying my faith but I, I couldn't have believed God for a million dollars I couldn't have believed God for a thousand dollars why my faith wasn't there yet and sometimes today you're trying to believe God for more than what you have faith for you know the Bible definition of faith is now faith now faith now faith, are you getting it? Now faith is the evidence of things not seen yet. Faith is evidence. Faith is substance. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen yet. Faith is not nothing. God didn't create the world out of nothing. He created it out of faith. He said, let there be light. Faith is something. Faith is the revelation of what you say is going to come to pass. And I wasn't there yet. I remember when we were building our uh, Family Life Center. And we did something we'd never done before, and I would never do it again. I wouldn't recommend it. We did a capital campaign where uh, we raised the money we asked the people to to uh, make a pledge now, now we asked people to make pledges for but we had never borrowed the money to build we'd always paid cash for everything but we borrowed the money to build the family life center and then did a capital campaign to pay the thing off which we'd never done before built everything on this campus debt free and built it and paid for it as we went but we, I let, I, I let, I was talked into this, and I, it was my fault. I had to repent to God and the congregation because it put us in debt, which we'd never been before. And so we began the capital campaign, and we asked people to give, 
and we had everybody's <clears throat> giving record, and we did this, you know, logistically. I hired a company out of Dallas to come help us, and blah, 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 blah. Nothing wrong with it if that's the way God tells you to do it. And so here we are, and we we developed a a, a ceiling, a, a top. Okay, wh where is the top? The top giver. Jeannie and I set the, the ceiling, the, the goal of $100,000. So we signed up to pledge $100,000. We didn't have $100,000, but that's where our faith was at that time. So we believed God that we would give $100,000 into this project. And we did. God supernaturally brought the money to us and we gave it. Every time we get it, we give it to the church. And there were other people, I remember one particular couple told me, and, and people did this willingly. I mean, the church really rallied. rallied. <clears throat> we actually uh, had about two and a half million dollars pledged, maybe three million pledged, but a million of that three million didn't come in. So we were left a million or something or, or more short of the goal. And I, I think our goal was like, uh, the cost was about $5 million, And I think we were, we got about three or f three and a half million pledged, but then a million didn't come in. So that was a couple of million or more left that we had to pay out. And this one couple came to me and said, Pastor and Sister Jeannie, my wife and I are going to join you at the $100,000 level. Praise God. Hallelujah. To my knowledge, they never gave more than 100 bucks. They never fulfilled their pledge and then eventually left the church. Why did they not fulfill their pledge? I knew these people well enough to know and loved them, appreciated them, not a criticism, but I knew them well enough to know they didn't have faith for $100,000. They had $100 faith, maybe $200 faith, but not $100,000 faith. And for them to tell me, we're going to join you, at that, that was a flippant, frivolous statement. It was not based on faith. It was not based on the Word of God. And it wasn't based on what the Holy Spirit told them. Now, this was two, 10 years ago. So they never did complete their pledge of 100000 There were a lot of people like that didn't make that much pledge, but they didn't keep their pledges. And usually is the reason is because they never really heard from God. Because if God speaks to you to do something, He is going to supply the need. So God said, you can believe me to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. And the reason some people don't remove the limits is because they haven't developed their faith. Faith is what it takes to remove limits. Now, to pass these limits, you have to believe what God said. He, will, he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think according to the power that works in you the power of love. Now, let's go over to Mark chapter 5 and let's look at verse 25. Talking about passing the limit. Mark 5, 25. You've heard this story many times. A certain woman had an issue of blood 12 years, suffered many things and many physicians, spent all she had, nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus. Now let's don't run through this too quickly. This woman had an issue of blood 12 years. If you've ever had to deal with any sickness, any disease, any abnormality for that long, you know that after a while you accept it and just live with it. When that limit becomes a lifestyle, it's hard to remove it. Did you hear what I said? 
When that limit becomes a lifestyle, it becomes a part of you, it's hard to remove. And the only way you can remove it is to get a revelation of your faith and overcoming in the Word of God. So you got to, it, it's work, folks. You got to get in the Bible. You got to read it. You got to pray. You got to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you. Get a revelation and you stay with it. And then all of a sudden, bang, one day faith comes. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. And all of a sudden, boom, faith comes. But this woman, for 12 years, this limit had become a way of life. She had suffered many things of many physicians. She had spent all she had and was no better. But she rather grew worse. So it was not only not working, she wasn't just treading water, staying the same. She was getting worse. But when she heard of Jesus, hallelujah, faith came. When she heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, the amplified version of the scripture says, she continually said, for she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. What happened here? She passed the limit. The limit had become a way of life. But when she heard of Jesus, when she heard, now I'm borrowing the scripture in Ephesians, when she heard that God could do exceeding abundantly above and beyond what she could ask or think, she said, she continually said, she said, if I touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. And she did, and she was. She passed the limit of that disease. I was with Brother Copeland in uh, Manila, Philippines several years ago. He did two crusades over there, one in the uh, Araneta Coliseum where I think it was Joe Frazier fought the, the thriller from Manila, the big boxing match over there. And then uh, once in an Elizabethan theater over by the bay, and uh, several of us went over there together to support Brother Copeland and help him in his crusades. First time he'd done a big crusade like that. And in this one crusade, uh, I think Gloria was teaching on uh, the, the healing services. And after the teaching, she and Kenneth came up to the platform and she began to tell people uh, to get up and come up out of their seats and that all of us, the ministers that were with them, would be praying for uh, the people that came up. And I was standing over to the right side, uh, her right side uh, facing the platform, and there was this woman that they had brought up, and she had an issue of blood. And they brought her up in a chair and sat her right up by the front row of the front aisle. They didn't get her out of the chair because if she stood up or got out of the chair, the blood would flow. And so she stayed seated, heard the whole service, and the Lord, the Lord told me to go over and tell her to get up that she was healed. And before I could get to her, Brother Copeland walked up to the microphone and said, all right, everybody stand up. This woman stood up and there was no blood. She was healed by her own faith, believing what she'd heard. What was that? Faith came and she acted on what she had heard. And God's healing power manifest exceeding abundantly above all that she asked or thought. And she was healed. What did she do? She passed a limit. She went past a limit. How do you pass a limit? Well, first of all, the word exceeding means to pass, to go beyond the limit. So God could do exceeding 
abundantly above all you ask or think. So exceeding means to pass the limit. How do you go beyond what you ask or think? In the spirit, by faith. That's the only way to do it. Now, let's go to John 14. And I'm running out of time for today. So I want to hurry here. John chapter 14. And let's look at 13 and 14. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So whatever you ask in Jesus' name, the Father will be glorified in the Son. Verse 14, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. How do you go beyond what you ask? Well, first of all, you've got to ask. Now, here's a kicker here. How do you go beyond what you ask or think? Go over to Philippians 4. Now, you, <laughs> you've got to get your thinking lined up with your asking. Philippians 4, verse 8 and 9. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, honest, pure, uh, excuse me, true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report, any virtue, any praise, think on these things. Don't think on the sickness, the illness, uh, the lack. Think on these things. And those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and, God, and the God of peace shall be with you. So what are you to ask? What are you to think? Whatever you ask in my name. Change what you think and you'll change what you ask. Now, tomorrow I want you to come back and join me. We're going to talk about God's thoughts. How does God think? Because you're going to have to start thinking the same way. We'll get to that tomorrow. A reminder, VTN's on Facebook, VTN, your Arkansas Christian Connection. You can also follow me on Twitter, happy underscore Caldwell. And this episode is available to watch online. Log on to vtntv.com and click on Watch On Demand. If you want to re-watch this program or if you miss one, you can go online and pull it up. Uh, also, remember, we're live stream 24-7, so just click on vtntv.com and click on live stream and you can watch VTN anywhere in the world. Don't forget to join me tomorrow. Remember, Jesus is Lord of Arkansas and where you're watching too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at P.O. Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas 72221 or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com.